It might start with some tingling in your fingers or hands, a little weakness in your grip. Carpal tunnel syndrome presents in many different ways. And our physiotherapy columnist, Mike Salemi, joins me in studio now to talk about how, what it is, how to treat it. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. How are you? Carpal tunnel. Oh, it's making my wrists feel a little stiff. What is it, carpal tunnel syndrome? So carpal tunnel, there is a nerve that travels through your arm. Uh, into the wrist, into the digits. It's called the median nerve. And median nerve, when that's compressed at the level of the wrist, someone will have developed carpal tunnel. There's a lot of ways you can get this, though. You know, we often think it's because you're too sedentary at a desk. That's one way. But what are some other ways that you can suffer from this? So there, there's a few risk factors that can cause carpal tunnel. To, to go over what the median nerve actually does, the median nerve, when it inserts into the, into the fingers, is responsible for sensation, and it's also responsible for dexterity and movement and, and actual muscle innervation. So when that nerve is irritated, someone's going to develop either numbness, tingling, they might feel pins and needles, pain at the level of the wrist and into the fingers. And not all fingers, actually. It's the thumb, index finger, middle finger, and then half the ring finger is how it most, yeah. Really? It's kind of an interesting innervation, yeah. And what about the pinky, just left out entirely? Then that's a different uh, spot entirely. That oh. wouldn't be innervated by the median nerve. Interesting. So we have telltale signs of what someone might present like with carpal tunnel. For the question of who would be at risk, so when this nerve is irritated at the level of the wrist, there are a few factors that might cause that. If someone's had a history of injuries or trauma or arthritis, that can cause inflammation and irritation of that nerve at the level of the wrist. We know that just anatomically speaking, women generally have a more narrow carpal tunnel. So they're actually three times more likely to develop that than men. And that's just a physiological thing? It's just a physiological thing, just okay. generally speaking. And then like you'd mentioned, there are certain activities or postures that can increase the risk of carpal tunnel. Sedentary lifestyles where your wrists are extended, for example, sitting at a keyboard, that constant you know, extension or, or pressure on the nerve can also develop carpal tunnel. So that's like when you're sitting at a computer and your hands are constantly in a little bit of an upward position? That's exactly it, yeah. So they can kind of be flexed backwards. Mm -hmm. That constant pull on the nerve repetitively, hours and hours a day, weeks and weeks and years and years, that can cause an issue as well. So then what can you do if you're like, well, I have to be in the office for eight hours a day, five days a week. What can you do to then help avoid getting that sort of injury? So what, what happens there is, number one, it's super important to understand your ergonomic setup. If you are, for example, when COVID first started and a lot of people were working from home, they went from a decent setup at work to sitting at the kitchen table. Yeah. The heights were awkward. Their chairs weren't adjustable. And so it's, it's super important to understand what your setup is like. Ideally, you're in a, in a neutral position with your wrist. You're not harped either backwards or forwards. Uh, in terms of wrist range of motion. And it's important to understand that movement is medicine. We always want to incorporate some sort of stretching and strengthening of our entire bodies, but especially if we're in that position for a long term, then the wrist as well. So what are some ways that you can stretch your wrist? Because you think about it and it's like, okay, I know how to like work out my hamstrings. Yeah, exactly. But what do I do for this little part here? <laughs> well, basically, usually what I start with is if you straighten the elbow. Okay. And then you put your fingers on top of the back of your hand and you just pull that back as far as you can until you start to feel a stretch in your forearm. Right. You'd hold that for about 30 seconds to a minute. It should be a comfortable stretch. And then you can bring your palm upwards, keep your elbow straight, and then pull the fingers back as well. That'll stretch your flexors. So those are two very simple ones that I tell a lot of my patients to use. And as well, just movement in general. We so gotta just, move. Just just moving around. Just move around. I think about maybe all the... <laughs> dance the macarena. That's a good one too. Okay. Yeah. Maybe get a little maracas in there. That's yeah, gonna move those wrists to. right around. Exactly. Uh, no, I'm thinking about things like uh, I remember all the squeeze. Uh, you know, my dad had one of those when I was a kid, where he right. would squeeze it, and it was a tension squeezer or like stress balls. You know, where you're kind of working. Are those things beneficial for something like this? Absolutely. Strengthening of of the wrist flexors and and the hand muscles. There's nothing wrong with that either. Especially yeah. if if your wrist is in neutral. That's that'd be a good thing if. If you're dealing with carpal tunnel and, and your wrist is fully flexed back and you're doing those exercises, that might make it worse, like in an acute way, mm -hmm. not long term. But um, there are definitely many ways to manage carpal tunnel. What's important to know is if these symptoms first appear, you want to get that looked at. Yeah, because that's what I was going to ask. If exactly. you feel that tingle, what's if the first If you feel step? that tingle, 
You know, it's not uncommon to have numbness and tingling down the arm. Well, we're all going to experience that from time to time if you wake up in an awkward position. Don't be alarmed there. But if you are dealing with, you know, numbness and tingling that doesn't seem normal and it seems to be happening daily, especially, like I said, in the first three fingers, then you want to look into that because there are different levels. You have mild carpal tunnel, moderate, or severe. Mm -hmm. Once you get into the severe territory, there's chances that that constant compression on that median nerve can actually cause muscle atrophy of the muscles that that nerve innervates. And once you deal with that, now you're losing control of your fingers, you lose dexterity, you lose strength, and that's a lot more complex to get out of. So going to your doctor, going to your physical therapist, we do a, a really thorough history, find out what the cause was, and we kind of have our, our indicators of, of what might be carpal tunnel or what might not be. There are special tests that we can use where we can put compression on that nerve ourselves and see if that reproduces your, your symptoms. And then if we really want to be sure, we can send you back to your doctor, get you a rec form for a nerve conduction test, which is really the be all end all. We'll know for sure if that nerve is compromised or not. Right. And then it's basically what? Stretching, maybe massage, those sorts of things to get you back to a better feeling? So early on, usually we go for a conservative approach, for example, wearing a brace or a splint. Okay. So that, especially when you're asleep, people sometimes find themselves in, in positions where they're harping on that nerve. Mm -hmm. So wearing a splint for a little while can take pressure off that nerve, can reduce inflammation. If that doesn't work, then definitely stretching and, and strengthening in pain-free ranges. Sometimes an injection can help reduce inflammation. But if all those things don't work and you're in that moderate to severe category, then surgery is an option where you can actually cut through the ligament that's compressing on that nerve and then there's usually instant relief. Hmm. All right. Well, thanks for this, Mike. I'm going to do my stretches because I've been sitting at this computer for <laughs> hours already this morning. My pleasure. Yeah, thanks as always for Very coming nice in. nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you too. Mike Salami is a physiotherapist at Movenetics. He joins us once a month to talk about physiotherapy. And if you have a question that you'd like Mike to tackle, you can send us an email, edmontonam at cbc.ca.